Welcome back to More Moss to the People. This is Asa. I am your host. Today, I am meeting with the angel, the precious, sweet, sweet Candy Haza from Pennsylvania, whom I have been following for quite some time and had some interactions with, been in some of your groups, listening on your workshops. I think you are by far one of the kindest human beings that I have had the pleasure of meeting virtually. And <laughs> welcome Thank to you. more Moss to the people. <laughs> welcome. Um, please let us know a little bit. Let my let my listeners hear who you are. Well, first, I, I want to accept the generous gift that she's given me by uh, acknowledging me. So I just want to mm -hmm. say to my heart that I receive, I receive, I receive. Mm -hmm. Because so many times I'll introduce myself, but so many times we just slough over the beautiful introduction of somebody recognizing mm -hmm. ourselves. And um, it's important for us to take that into our heart too, because mm -hmm. we give so much away as women. So mm -hmm. you see why name... I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Kind. Thank you so much. Mm, My name you. is Candace Haza, and I'm a spiritual strategist and a business intuitive, and I help people to get back in alignment with their mission, mm -hmm. with their purpose, their passion, and their profits with the use of intuition. Mm. Most specifically, the Akashic Records, which I'm sure we're going to talk about in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Oh my gosh, you... Tell I me, mean, tell your, your journey. Let's, let's start with your journey to your intuitive self. Um, can you go back a little, because let me just give you a little bit of history for the more moss, the whole movement, the idea behind more moss is um, some people dare to jump out of the rat race because it's just not a good fit for them. And they don't feel aligned with it. Something is off. I'm getting stressed. You have, you know, you hit the wall as they call it in Sweden, or you just, it doesn't feel like it's you. Um, and I like to have conversations with people who dare to be different, who dare to choose themselves first so that they can serve in the world from a pure place of, I mean, like from love and, um, that really just dare to be different in the world where there are so much sameness. And I see you as somebody that was in a corporate world in an education system and you you changed your life. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It was totally a 180 for sure. <laughs> so, you know, I like the fact that she preframes this by saying that people do something different. The thing of it was for me, I stayed in sameness and that's where I think I was getting stuck. Now I do feel that I served, I worked at a university for 30 years. I was a mom of two children and, you know, I was a good girl and I followed the rules, you know, went to church. I did all those things that we thought that we should be doing possibly. And then all of a sudden I hit, as you called it, a wall, a moss, right? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hit it. <laughs> I hit the wall. And mm -hmm. so the wall for me at the time was, first of all, the guides were saying, we need, we need you come and join us. And I was like, I'm not telling people what I really do. Cause uh -huh. I worked at a university at my master's degree. I was the assistant director for the mm -hmm. center for student involvement and leadership, which just meant I was a really big title. And I was really underpaid and did a <laughs> lot of work. That's all that a lot of work for a little bit of dough. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And so my guides kept saying like, they were poking me and I was like, guys, guides, <laughs> literally, <laughs> what is going on here? And so they started a cycle in my life. So that next January, when they start poking me, the next January was like 2014. And they, the very first thing that happened is I got sick with, I had a toothache that would not go away. And I finally just had the thing pulled because I was in so much pain. Mm. And so that's how my year started. And then they thought I had bladder cancer. Then they thought I had something wrong with an eustachian tube. It, they, it went on and on and on. I ended up getting a hysterectomy in April, came back August 25th, still determined to work. And on August 25th, when I came back, I had thyroid cancer. <laughs> and oh I'm laughing. Goodness. I actually laughed when they told me because not because it's funny, but I had gone through so much. My yeah. girlfriend said, you've had every test known to man at this point. Like you have, you're sparkling, you know? <laughs> and then I had, I came back and had cancer. Oy. So I was like, okay, universe, I hear you. <laughs> hmm. And that's what kind of started my spiritual journey because I had thyroid cancer, which 
is a great type of cancer. You should heal in two weeks, go back oh. to work. That's what they okay. told me. Okay. That wasn't the truth. Uh -huh. And it wasn't the truth for most thyroid patients. They take out, it's like your thyroid is like your engine, your steering wheel, your brake, and your gas in a car. So basically they take that away and then said, here's your car back, lady. <laughs> Go drive. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. I couldn't. My brain didn't work. Yeah. And so, as I said, I had a super busy job and my brain wasn't working. I couldn't get thoughts. I, I couldn't read writing for almost two years. Um, like a self-study book, which I ended up writing, but in the beginning I couldn't read self-help books at all for two years. Okay. So I couldn't go back to work because it's hard to see inside somebody's head. If their right. arms and legs and eyes and mouth are working, you think their brain should be working, but my sure. brain wasn't working. And how do you prove that to somebody? Mm. So I knew I'd probably get fired if I went back to work, literally, mm. because how, you know, I couldn't keep up. I, yeah. I couldn't read. Right. So I made a decision mm -hmm. after about a year of trying to heal. I thought, you know what? I need to respect me and mm -hmm. my healing and myself. And I need to walk away from a 30 year career. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Wow. But I still kept hearing heal thyself. And we're going to show you what's next. But they wouldn't show it to me in the meantime, but they kept still, I kept, up, I kept hearing my guys, we're going to take care of you. This is going to be okay. Mm. And I, I said, okay, I'm going to trust. So may I ask you your guides, when did you start to even, have you always heard them? Had they always been with you and talking with you? How would it, when did that start? Well, I didn't know that people don't or didn't. So it wasn't a conversation I had with anybody because it would be kind of like, well, you went to the bathroom today, didn't you? Like it, it would seem like a silly conversation to me to have because they've always talked to me. They've always guided me. And I thought everybody was like me. Uh -huh. So I didn't think I was unique yeah. at all. <laughs> So you've been listening to them, which is, which is the most important thing is that you were listening to yours, right? I mean, <laughs> and you know, what's kind of cool. And so this is kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but what's kind of cool is I'm developing a new relationship with my guides hmm. because we don't talk to them enough. Hmm. Cause I'm like, Oh, you know, my business is slow right now. And they're like, well, you're not asking us for anything. <laughs> Oh, wait, I, I can like, ask. Oh, I have to yeah. ask. And they're like, that's how this works. <laughs> like, oh, it's good to know. Note to self. <laughs> give you what you ask for. You know, uh, I mean, of course, if I wanted something that didn't serve the highest yeah. purpose, right. but I'm in the middle of serving my highest purpose. So if I mm -hmm. say, can I please have some more clients? Um, then they would give them to me because it's my highest purpose. But yes. if I would say something like, I'd really like seven ice cream cones today. That might not be, maybe one of them would be good. Right. Maybe one would probably be enough for you. Maybe not seven. Okay. So they're, they're speaking, you're listening, you're asking, your relationship is changing. Um, you, how you came into my life and into my world was a term that I had never heard before, before, before you. And that was the term, the Akashic records. And now I hear, of course, once you hear it one time, then you hear it all over the place. And I would love if, because you're my girl, you are the person that I trust mm -hmm. the most around this. And um, I mean, it is, it is hard to put wrap your head around. So, and I know you do a really nice job. So can you please explain what are the Akashic records? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to spell it first so that people can look it up as well. Okay. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, I never thought of doing that, but recently people say it helps. So it's Akashic, A-K-A-S-H-I-C, mm -hmm. records. And what they simply are is think of it as your cell phone. Most people in this world now have a cell phone. I don't know what type you have, but it doesn't matter. It's a mm -hmm. cell phone. Mm -hmm. And so have you ever asked your cell phone a question mm -hmm. and they said, I don't know? <laughs> rarely right so mm -hmm. if you google search and say hey um hey google can you show me where the nearest bath barn is because i'm refurbishing my bathroom it never says no does it mm -hmm. no 
it might give you an option in Europe if I forgot right. to say Pennsylvania. But <laughs> right, yeah, maybe not so, always correct, but that's okay. Answers. So, exactly. So basically, the Akashic records are a Google search for your soul, and I'm the voice of Siri in a situation where somebody is having a reading. And so, Candy, what do you mean by it's it's a database? So all of your past, all of your present, and all of your future is already recorded in this database. Mm -hmm. So when you have an Akashic Record reading, you can see the past, how it connects with the moment of the future. You can see the now and what is needed in the now, and you can see what can be happening in the future. So in business, this is, I didn't know how this was going to support people. Remember, my guides were saying, we need you. We need mm -hmm. you. And I'm like, that's great. Show me what to do. Yeah. I don't know how you need me. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, well, what ended up happening was they wanted to amplify people's businesses mm -hmm. because the Akashic records, if you could see the highest probability of a decision that you're making, mm -hmm. and we naturally make 35,000 decisions a day. Mm -hmm. So think of it as a woman entrepreneur, what our decision makings are like, right. it's probably over 35,000. And this is an actual statistic. Hmm. So if you have to make all these decisions and you get stuck in just one decision that leads to the next decision, you can hmm. shut your whole business down with one ream or moment of stuckness. Hmm. And so it's super important to be able to see these high probability outcomes so that you know which direction is the best for your personal life mission. Hmm. So these are past lives. This is just this life. Is that correct? Well, you can see past lives, which that's kind of a whole different question. So how okay. I, and, and I'll go there, but what I want to do is I want to establish how we use them in this lifetime for mission based businesses. So say for instance, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about myself because it's the easiest yeah. for me. So I didn't know what my highest purpose was, except that you asked me a question, how did you transition from, you know, the college administrator into a spiritual strategist and life really does bring you along on a journey and it gives you everything that you need to prepare you. Mm -hmm. So I was studying real estate. I was studying stock. I was studying business. I was working with my own business with real estate and developing it while I was co-jointly working with the university. But I never thought of myself as a business owner for some, some reason. So mm -hmm. When people start coming to me, they'd ask me business questions. Hey, you know, I have this decision to make, like, I'd like to buy this building or, or, you know, what's my highest and best. I'd like to buy like a little apartment office. And then I see the highest probability. I see mm -hmm. that they might have 15 businesses. And so just sometimes, and I have a testim a testimony, this one person said, you said think bigger. <laughs> and I never thought big enough. Mm -hmm. But in the records, it showed me the bigger mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. insight alone has made her a $6 million business from wow. a zero business. Yeah. And it's not about just the money. She's influencing 1200 people that are in need in mental health wow. a day. Mm -hmm. She's saving lives. So it's not mm -hmm. just the 6 million, the Akashic database provided with her her with a vision. And mm -hmm. that's what the Akashic records do for present day. There is things that we can do to look into the past and past lives. Mm -hmm. And we do do that sometimes during a block release. Okay. But really, I believe that it's all about the now for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we need to go to the past to clear something out to bring us further into the future. Right. That's my personal belief. Mm -hmm. Now, is 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 it an actual library? I mean, is it where do you go inside of yourself because you're getting the information? You are con you're actually asking for permission from the person, right, to yes. open up open up their records. Where are you going? Is is it a, is it a library? <laughs> is it a big library somewhere? Well, you know why I think they call it a library. It doesn't look like that. It has never looked like that to me. Mm. The only thing I ever heard in the beginning was when I would close the records, I hear the sound of a big, heavy book. 
And then hmm. that's, that was my signal that the records had closed. So okay. where I go, this is how it looks for me. It's different for everybody because each of us have a different superpower or hmm. modality of intuition. I happen to have developed all layers of my, uh, like I call intuition a muscle and I've developed all layers, the seeing, the hearing, the feeling, the knowing, the tasting, the smelling. I have all of those, but some people might just have one superpower to start, but we can all develop them. Mm -hmm. So where I go is when I close my eyes, I see literally an electric database, literally. And that's what it looks like for me. And then once I say um, to you, do I have permission to look? I see a huge database. Then we start asking the questions. Now, mm -hmm. this is when it becomes interesting. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine like going onto your computer, onto maps, and you know how you get the big vision of like, you're part of the whole world. Right. And then when you want to see, as we said, I'm in Pennsylvania, that map sure does change visually, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. sure. And then when you put my front address, then the map changes again. That's mm -hmm. literally what it looks like in the Akasha mm -hmm. database. And that's why questions and how to ask them are mm -hmm. one of the most important features after you learn to open this database, which mm. isn't hard by the way, and all of you can do it and all oh. of you have them. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll get to that in a minute. So the questions and the importance of being able to ask the the highest and best questions. Is that what you mean? It's like, I mean, as far as knowing what to ask instead of like, mm -hmm. Hey, how, what's going to happen tomorrow? Or I mean, mm -hmm. being specific and it will tomorrow, will this happen in my life or my world or my experience or whatever mm -hmm. is, uh, and, and you've become a, a professional question asker of the records. So yeah, I've, I've been asking questions a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I first started to talk to angels and guides. That's where I first started to connect. Um, I wasn't super conscious. I knew people were talking in my head. I, I mm. thought that that was me. So I didn't know it was a guide. I thought, oh, that's interesting. You know, an interesting thought that really wasn't part of me, you know, like, oh, okay. I can do that instead of this. That makes sense. But those parts of you are often guides. And once you can delineate the voices in your head, then you start knowing who you're talking to when you're around or when a guide is around. Mm -hmm. So recently, because I'm getting older and I'm getting forgetful, is I can't remember where I put things. And so I have this beautiful guide who has shown up. And when I'm like, where did I put my glasses again? And I'll close my eyes and I see the exact location because I have this wonderful guide that I call my memory guide. And I, I say, thank you so much. Thank Please you. Stay with me <laughs> yeah, in I'm all my older you. years and show me where I'm, you know, if I'm walking down the street and, and forget where I'm at, which I say, can you help me then too? So. <laughs> of course, I'll be here for you always. <laughs> Tell me what you think about have you ever had anybody ask you, can you look into the records to see when I'm going to die? I have had several people ask me that. Mm. Yeah. Were they sick? Yes. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, my one dog, I, this is kind of interesting. So, you know, I had a couple of podcasts. I have an intuitive business podcast yes. in case you want to hear more. I'm not trying to promote myself. But no, I, I think it's fantastic. I like of course. it. Yes, <laughs> so, of course I do. I like listening to it. Yes. So um, on what, take me back to the moment where we were. The question I asked you, do people ever ask you about when they're going to oh. die? Okay. So I was struggling with one of my dogs, both of my dogs got sick last year. One was mm -hmm. probably 12. One was 15. One was 14. The older one was 14 weeks when we got her. So we knew her exact mm -hmm. age, but the other one, we didn't, she mm -hmm. could have been three. She could have been four, but I knew she was not doing well. The other one wasn't doing well either. Mm -hmm. And so I said to my guides, I need to know when Abby's going to go. I need, I just need, my heart needs to know. And mm -hmm. so I closed my eyes and she'd been yelping at night. So she had um, downer syndrome, like dementia. So all day mm -hmm. long, she was fine. The sun went down and her brain kind of went down and she would go woof, woof, woof. And she would look at the floor like a, a mouse or something was running around and there was no way to calm her down. So this mm -hmm. happened for six months. And 
before the six month window, I said to my guides, what should I do? Like, help me. And they showed me, uh, they can't do times very quickly, but what they did is they showed me when it was going to happen by mm. seasons. Okay. And they showed me before it would get really cold and before any ice would happen, that she would be gone. She wouldn't mm. be walking on any ice. Cause I was kind of worried about that. Mm. And she passed on October 24th, mm. right after Halloween or right yeah. after Halloween, she passed. So mm. it's ex the exact time. So they, mm. they can show you that. And mm. I've actually got to watch people exit what it looks like to exit the body. Oh, I watched wow. probably about a dozen Ooh. of those at this point now. So were you with them? I mean, how, how did, how did you see that? No, actually a couple people I wasn't. So, um, my, my mom-in-law mm. passed in yeah. September and I had COVID and I was in bed and of course I didn't know that she was going to pass, but she was, she wasn't doing well. She had dementia. She was mm. struggling, but nothing really physical was wrong with her. Like yeah. Yeah. she had good, better eyesight than us, better <laughs> hearing than us. You know, she took right less medication than any of us took. And she, you know, but her mind wasn't doing well. So my husband came in and said, Hey, mom's numbers are changing on her kidneys or something, but they're not really concerned, but it's just a caution. And I said, well, maybe you should go down to Reading and see your mom. And he said, you know what? He, he said, you have COVID. What if I have COVID? No, like, right. and I said, yeah. Okay. So he left and I had a fever. And so all of a sudden I was in Josie's room, my mother-in-law's room. And I saw her lying there and I was like, well, this is an interesting vision. <laughs> you know, plus I have a fever. So I'm right. thinking, well, yeah, I'm, I'm delusional, there. right? <laughs> yeah, I'm delusional now. <laughs> and so I'm in her room and I feel like I'm almost standing there. And my father-in-law loved Berksheim. That's where she was at. And he used to serve the elderly as a deacon in the Catholic church. So that was uh, where he and I used to go together mm -hmm. when I was a young girl and I would visit nice. in my twenties. Mm. And so, um, anyways, I'm standing in Burke's home with Josie and John comes in my father-in-law and he says, Josie, he said, I think it's time to go home, hon. She goes, all right. She got up out of bed and I watched her exit her body. Like she sat up like almost like a virtual sit out of your body. She looked old. She sat mm -hmm. up and she was old. When her feet hit the ground and she took his hand, the next thing that happened was a pasture of a field, like it was green grass mm. and tulips. And mm. I saw them holding hands. And as they walked away, I saw an image of them about 20 some years old. Oh, and that's beautiful. Of, it was beautiful. And all of a sudden my husband came in and he said, mom passed. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I've seen people go mm -hmm. if I've not been present. Now, recently Abby passed and my son really wanted to be like at the head of her body. Like he was hugging and embracing her body. So I sat back the other dog. I was kind of leaning in this time. I sat back and I knew she was going. We had a doctor with us present mm -hmm. in our home and I closed my eyes because I decided I wanted to see what it looked like. And so I asked my guys, I'm like, can you take me through this journey with her? Instead of me wailing like I was doing and stuff, mm -hmm. I'm like, can I just see this magic, this moment? Like, you know, it was, it's just such a beautiful moment. Death is mm -hmm. such a beautiful moment mm -hmm. if you let it be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were saying goodbye and I closed my eyes and I thought Jules, my other dog was going to come because I could see her in downward dog. Uh -huh. So as this transition's happening, I see my other dog come in and downward dog like, Hey, we're going to play wag, mm -hmm. wag, wag. We're mm -hmm. going to play. And the next thing that happened during transition is that's not what I saw. And that's mm -hmm. how I knew it was purely my dog's vision. I forgot how much Abby loved the snow. Mm -hmm. And I could see her in fresh Colorado snow that was newly laid, newly powdered. And the very first thing I start hearing was this. Like sounds of running. And then I heard like breathing. And I was like, what is going on? And then I saw it. She was running in the field of snow. And so that's how I've watched Happy. a couple of the passing. So one was consciously mm. going there. The other one was unconsciously being invited in. Yeah. Oh gosh. How beautiful. Ooh, I got full body chills. Truth bumps again, the truth bumps all over. It's so <laughs> beautiful. <truth> yeah. <laughs> that's, oh, what a gorgeous. Thank you for sharing that.
Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank That's you. very personal, very private, and I appreciate that. Um, it's it's important. The, the work that you do is important. And, you know, you, you said that you have been going through um, some spiritual upgrades we talked about and... <laughs> That's what we're calling that because there's there's definitely a shift happening. I feel it. Many people feel it in in the collective right now. Um, would you be willing to talk a little bit about what you've been going through and what you're seeing right now as as uh, the the purging of what's happening? So I'm seeing uh, women and businesses. Um around the world, I, you know, I have clients and I think I counted 32 countries now. <laughs> I used to say 22 and then I just had a big opening. So, mm -hmm. so across the world, literally I've opened over 5,000 hours of Akashic records. And what I'm seeing right now is there's a big shift mm -hmm. and some things are falling away right now. And the things that are falling away aren't necessarily easy. So I see people in some pain right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and some joy because some of the things that are falling away that really wasn't serving them any longer. And yeah. that's where I am in my life. Mm -hmm. So this year, uh, I, you know, I shared in June. So I came back from Cyprus in February and the minute I landed, I was in about the 30th hour of my trip and my girlfriend mm -hmm. phoned and she was screaming and crying and oh, she never does that. And she goes, my brother, my brother, Nick, Nick, Nick. And I'm like, what? Okay. And here, Nick had passed away through mm. his own hands. Oh. And so that's how I came in in February to this mm. year. And so then in January or in June, my one dog passed, you know, my mother-in-law passed. I had COVID. My husband had COVID. Like we all got through these COVID cycles. Mm. And then my husband and I separated. And mm. A couple of those things, about five of those things happened back to back in less than six weeks. And it literally emotionally shut me down. Sure. You know, we have to, for me, I process through my body. I'm kinesthetic when I process. Mm -hmm. I have all of the modalities. I'm visual when I read. Um, I'm kinesthetic. I taste, I smell, I hear. But during this time, how I process my emotions is through my body. And so when you have those, that many emotions, right. a loss of a 40 year marriage, a 40 year mm -hmm. mother-in-law, you know, a, a 15 year old dog that helped to raise my son, you know, mm -hmm. a 12 year old dog that we loved and uh, my own physical health, you know, was struggling with COVID and, you know, I wasn't coming around quickly with it. And I just, this is what I'm seeing across the board, that there's this massive purging of business, of life, of love, mm -hmm. of, so that's what I'm seeing. And I started to realize that this wasn't a punishment for something, not that I thought it was, but I'm like, what the heck is, <laughs> <laughs> what is I, happening? <laughs> what is happening? I started to realize that <sighs> in order for us to be kind of clean and available for this next cycle that's coming in for our world, we need to release what is no longer serving. And some of the things were old congested stuff in my life yeah. or things that needed to be released so that I had more space for whatever right. is new. That's right. I I'm feeling it too. And that, that is not like me because I mean, I've even posted on social media that I've been crying and having a, mm -hmm. just, I have to let the yep. emotions out. I'm like, what is yes. happening? It is so not like me to feel like, so almost like a loss, like a death. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I needed to, um, to feel this. And so we're, we're definitely going through something. There's something much, much bigger happening. And I think you're absolutely right. That it's super important that we are paying attention, really close attention to what is being presented to us. How do we feel really to mm -hmm. be getting, getting honest, getting honest, yeah. getting real and leaning in um, to our stories and what, what is serving us and what is not. And you are a beautiful person to be able to work with. If somebody's looking to have their Akashic records done, we're going to be putting all of your contact information in the show notes and, and places where people can contact you and start listening to your podcast because it's excellent. You have such a beautiful podcast voice too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you have, I know it's, we're wrapping up here on the time. Do you have anything that you would like to 
leave us with any kind of a tip or anything for anybody that might be feeling disconnected right now that you feel needs to be shared? Yes, this is something I've never shared anywhere publicly. I am going to do a podcast about it. But one of the things I've recently come upon is I did do an ayahuasca experience. When I was really struggling with all of these transitions, I was actually called to the experience of ayahuasca. And one of the things that Mother Ayahuasca said to me is she showed me the most beautiful thing I've ever seen ever in my visions. And there was this thing that happened that I was shown. Is it all right to tell you about this? Absolutely. Please. Whatever it is, I want to hear it. (laughs) I'm open to this. So I had a really rough journey with Mother Ayahuasca. She was very, she beat me up pretty bad Mm -hmm. and she gave me a lot of gifts. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it was a very mixed experience, but very much what I needed. She gave Mm -hmm. me everything I needed. At the very end, I ended up on an altar and she was healing me of all my wounds that Mm -hmm. I had lived in my whole life. And she kept Mm -hmm. telling me that this was going to happen on the last day. I didn't realize how much of a struggle that last day was going to be. Like I literally, they, they called a shamanic death. I was out. I was gone. I couldn't Mm. use my body, my anything. But in that moment, she showed me a couple gifts. The one gift was from the left in my upper vision. I saw something float in. It looked real in the moment. It looked Mm. real. Mm. It didn't look like a vision. It looked real. Mm -hmm. And I went, Oh, Oh, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And this is what I saw. Imagine coming from the sky up in your upper left-hand vision and imagine if a jellyfish could fly that motion, (laughs) like the blue, blue, like that softness in the flow. And in this flow was something that looked like a multi-winged angel, but it was just Mm. an outline, but it was kind of full. It wasn't streamlined like the shape of an angel. It was more rounded Mm. and had wings on it, double wings, two sets of wings. And all of it was, was an outline of a light that moved. It was Mm. fluid and moved. It had blues, pinks, whites, greens, yellows. And I heard this voice. I knew it was feminine. And it said, hello, I am the divine essence And I've given you this as you are now the keeper. And I said, well, what is this? And this is what I'm offering all your listeners to lean into right now is they said the divine essence is waking up inside of each one of us and your new role, your new purpose. And this is the first time I'm sharing it and talking about it today is to remember our divine essence. They explained to me, and it was multiple guides had to explain this because it was a little confusing to me in the beginning. This divine essence is the keeper of all of our birth missions. Mm. So before we come to earth, we are set up with our highest mission. We have many missions, but Mm. our highest and best mission. And right now what this divine essence was saying is that she's going to help in to awaken our divine essences. And so we're supposed to be paying attention right now. All those things that are going away are going away for a reason so that we can see what our truth Mm -hmm. is, step into it because we're needed Mm -hmm. now more than ever. So what I want to just say to each listener today is if anything resonated about this divine essence, all that that means simply for you is that there is something bigger a higher purpose coming to you. You might not see it. You might not feel it. You might not know it. But if a lot of things are falling away, please trust that you do have a more higher divine purpose and it is coming for you. It -hmm. is coming to you. Mm -hmm. And so sit with that gently. Don't feel pressure. Sit with that gently. Let that float just like a jellyfish into your Mm -hmm. heart. Mm-hmm. And then they showed me a release that I'm going to be using in my business, a way to release anxiety, um, fear, hurt, doubt. And so this the divine essence that. showed me this. And for, I think the, the next four hours, all, all that I was allowed to do was this thing that they showed me to mm-hmm. purge and clean my own system out so that I was sparkly clean 
mm. at the end of my ayahuasca journey. So. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That sounds like a, you had a pretty amazing journey. And thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. I, I feel that. I felt that. I feel that to be the truth. Mm. Mm. You're welcome. And mm. it was, it was a difficult journey. All of it's been difficult. <laughs> so if you're on a difficult journey, please look to the light mm. because when we're walking through, you got to walk through it to get to mm. the light. Yeah. And some of it's dirty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the path isn't always, you know, uh, mm. only in Walt Disney is uh, the, you know, the roads just no. happy little places, right? But the truth of the matter is we got to walk through some dark times in order to understand the light and the yes. joy on the other side. Exactly right, right. Everything is not just sparkles and unicorns. And that's, it's needed. It is really, it's needed for us so that we can understand the opposite of, I mean, if we want this, then we also have to see this so that we can appreciate this. You know, I mean, it's like if we yeah. only have this all the time, it's just like, mm, I want more. I want something better. I want something different. It's like, where then are we ever happy if we're not happy now even if we're in the middle of the sadness right there's always something beautiful always something good always a, a deeper a higher message for us oh i can talk to you forever all right let's let me let you off this <laughs> this podcast so you can get on with your day thank you thank you for sharing your heart with the whole world always you are truly a wonderful woman and i know that you are going to continue doing this high, high, important work. And I am so grateful to have you on this podcast with us. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. And I receive. <laughs> good, good. Cause it is given with love. All right, sweetheart. Thank you so much. And maybe we can have you back someday. Whenever you like, I would mm. love to be a guest. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You take care of yourself. Thank you for being here. You too. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.